Difficult to say. This particular specimen was dated by the evolutionists at 68 million years old. Yet, uh, like you said, uh, complex biological molecules like collagen protein and, uh, and the hemoglobin on the red blood cells should not last more than 10,000, 40,000, 100,000 years. Very, very, very tops. And this is thousands of times more than that. Uh, 65,000 times more than that. And uh, if you just look at this, it, the, the caption on the PBS Nova website where I got this picture says underneath there, this is the alleged vein in, uh, with the supposed red blood cells in it. But this is exactly the way it would look if it was a fresh cut specimen through the microscope. And by the way, those 68, 64 million years are simply postulated years. Oh, yes. They do not exist at all. Well, if the biblical record is accurate, then that, that uh, vein is only 4,350 some years old, and no wonder it still looks that good. We're on the same page. Yes. Take us beyond this, Dr. Jackson. Now, this is also something else. Uh, don't forget, there are many rumors that go around about why evolution is true. There's also many rumors that go around about why creation is not true, and uh, this is one of them. Uh, Dr. Eugenie Scott, the, uh, pre the executive director of the National Center for Science Education Incorporated, a basically a private anti-creation group, Certainly. made this chart and put it in the Skeptic Society's uh, uh, pamphlet, How to Debate a Creationist, uh, by Michael Shermer, the head of the Skeptic Society. This is the way she sees creationists, and she's a very influential person, and so this chart is widespread. Uh, when I debated the chair of the biology department at University of Ten uh, Texas, Tyler, he used this chart in his presentation. Mm -hmm. I was able to say to him, this is just not true. Notice the most uh, uh, enthusiastic creationists are labeled flat earthers, and it says right here. I don't here, know any flat earthers. I have never met one. I don't know that there are any alive. Flat earthers believe in the sh that the shape of the earth is flat because a literal reading of the Bible demands it. And it does not. Nowhere. It says the strictest creationists are flat earthers. I've never met one. I have met a few creationists who are geocentrists, but they're really out there and all the other creationists feel that way. Yes. Young earth creationists believe the earth is 6,000 years old, which actually is pretty old, but uh, they call us young there. And then there's all these other uh, gradations of creationist belief, but this is basically a caricature. There are some things in here that are true, for instance, young earth creationism, which would include you and myself, uh, Dr. Certainly. Paul. But then to throw these things in and a lie to work usually has to have a little good truth in it a to little, start. Uh, it does. A little rumor to start. So just dispel the myths they've heard about us. And That's that helps right. a lot in discussion. And what are we saying here? Well, we're looking at some things that evolutionists will say, we still have wisdom teeth, even though we have a... Uh, ape teeth with a nice little delicate human jaw. We still have tonsils even though they have no use. We still have an appendix. We still have a tailbone or a coccyx. And some whales have got uh, leg bones in deep inside the muscle tissue unattached to the spine. Uh, obviously these are all leftovers from a deep evolutionist past mm. back when we used to be worms and fish and lizards. But no, we now know that all of these organs have a use. By the time your 18 molar, your molars grew in, by the time, normally you need some spare Certainly. Uh, the appendix and the tonsils and the adenoids are intricately, uh, 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 they have a vascular from the uh, uh, immune system. It must be used in the immune system. All of these things really have a purpose. And if you're sitting on a chair, you're using your coccyx, right? Yes, now. you are. And the whale. Ah. Uh, well, it turns out that the reproductive organs for male and female whales are anchored to those muscles. Yes. They're not useless. And the muscles for calving or childbirth in a, in a female whale are anchored. They couldn't even push in labor if it wasn't for those bones. That's right. All a part of the design. Now, wrapping this up, would you make a, another statement here? And Eugenie Scott, tell us about this and this very quickly. Okay, yes. Uh, now, I did attend a lecture that uh, Dr. Scott presented at Ohio State University earlier this month. And uh, she did make the, the, the statement that 76% uh, of Americans are Christians, but 30% of them are born-again Christians. And she said, they're the ones we can't convince. She said, they're the ones that have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm pleased she knows that, in yes. fact. That brings us to the wrap-up of this program. Absolutely. <laughs> we recognize that God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit exercised that choice to make the cosmos, to make the beautifully orchestrated background symphony, and the foreground symphony with the sun and the moon, 
And then the living systems and man reflected in the image of God that Jesus Christ is the person of the Trinity who exercised all of that in person and by his spoken word. But that spoken word goes beyond what occurred in the past. That spoken word is your experience at this moment in that Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the heart's door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, hear my voice, hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him. I will sup with him and he with me. Literally, not in an audible voice, but speaking to the soul, Jesus Christ, whose word was expressed in the dynamics of the entire universe, now gently speaks to you, embracing you, wanting you to know him in the forgiveness of sin. The Christian perspective is unique in all the annals of scientific, religious, and philosophic research in that the Creator made the universe specifically to express himself in man, and when man deliberately chose not to walk with him, he walked with man, went to Calvary, died for our sins, was placed in a grave, buried, rose again, and is alive at this moment. And in a gentle, small voice, not audible, but known only to the Spirit, he asks you to open your heart's door. Would you pray this simple prayer? Just pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for making me, and thank you for pursuing me to this very moment. I need you. I need your forgiveness. I need your salvation. Lord Jesus, Right now, I open my heart's door to you. Come in at this moment. Save me. I claim you as my Savior, and I will live for you with all my heart. If you pray that prayer, welcome home. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.